Rob here from Unimedia, and in this video, we're going to be talking about using the gallery element in Elementor. So stay tuned. At Unimedia, we help companies to grow and thrive using the latest tools, tricks, and marketing techniques. From websites to online marketing, automated sales funnels, social media, and much more. We're always releasing new content on our YouTube channel, so make sure you click the like, subscribe, and notification button to make sure that you don't miss out. Just before we get going, I want to tell you about an exclusive offer we have on at the moment. We're giving away free access to our paid Hub Uno platform to the first 50 people that click the link in the description. We're going to be putting this link in the description of all of our videos, so make sure that you get in there as quick as you can. Within Hub Uno, we have created over 100 training videos in 13 courses, including a course on how to build a website using Elementor. You'll also find recorded webinars and a host of other free content, so remember to click the link in the description. Let's get on with the video. Hello and welcome to this video. We are going to be talking about the gallery element of Elementor. This uses images, so it will be a good idea to have a couple of images available in your media library. Before we begin then, I've got a page layout of Elementor full width. I've got one section here with one column in and I've changed the background color of the section to blue. To get back to our elements then, we just need to click the grid here. Let's go down to our gallery element then and drag it into our column. So at the moment we can't see anything. That's because we haven't got any images selected to go in this gallery. In this video, we're gonna go through content and style. Most of the features in advance have their own videos. So go and check those out if you wanna have a look. Let's go back to our content then. And the first option is to select what kind of gallery we want. I'm just gonna go through the single type in this video. If you select multiple, it just means that you can add more galleries, you can duplicate like so, add in more images, but all the settings will be pretty much the same anyway. So the first thing we need to do is put images into our gallery. So we just need to click this icon here, and here we have our media library. I'm going to add all of these in. A couple of these are portrait, we've got mostly landscape. Let's create new gallery and insert. Our first setting after adding our images is order by. So we've got default, which will be in the order that you've added them or put them into the gallery and random. I'm gonna select random. This will help us demonstrate the masonry in a moment. We've also got lazy load. So lazy load is a setting that means that your images won't be loaded until the user requests them. So for example, your images might be below the line of the screen. They won't be loaded until your user comes down to there. This can help your page load a little bit faster when they first come onto your website. We've got a couple of layout options. We've got grid, justified, and masonry. Let's just go through these quickly. Grid, all the blocks will be the exact same size, no matter whether your images are portrait, like this one is and this one, they all stick to the same ratio. Justified will give you this nice brick effect and will include having your portrait images completely displayed. And masonry will randomly tile the images together this works better when you've got a lot of images. Obviously I've got a couple of gaps here, but this just fits them together more like a puzzle as opposed to the um, justified uh, grid that we have, which is a lot more uniform. I am gonna go for justified in this case. And the settings we have here are row height, like so. Let's get them all on the same row. Yeah, we'll go with that. And we've got spacing as well, which will be the spacing between the images. We can choose some link settings here. We've got media file and custom URL, so we can send users away if we like. Don't forget, if you are sending them away from your website, select the cog and do open a new window. So when they close that new website they've opened, they'll come back to your page. I'm going to leave it on none. Generally, I won't 
link images that often because it's not obvious that images are clickable anyway to go to another link. You want a call to action really to send people away or send them to another page. And we've also got image size. So this doesn't mean the literal size that we've got here. Let me change the thumbnail and you can see that this is now a 150 by 150 thumbnail. And you can see that the images are slightly blurry. This is because it's trying to display them at 150 by 150, which isn't really their size. These are made, these are, these images are 600 by 400. So we want to really just set them maybe even at large. There we can see they're a lot more crisp or even full. The next in our content section, then we've got overlay. As you can see, currently we do have an overlay and it goes slightly dark when we hover over. We can decide whether we even want an overlay. We can turn it off and we can also choose if we like to have the title when we hover over and either a title again, caption or, or description. I'm going to give a description and when I hover over, you can see we've got the title of the image and the description. By the way, if you want to know where I got these images from, we got these images from Unsplash, it's a stock image website, really good. Um, there are others that we use, Pexels and Pixabay. Check the licenses on all images before you do use them on your website though. That's it for content when it comes to galleries. I'm gonna pause for a moment so that you can add your own galleries in and then we'll come back to this and we will style our gallery. Let's now style our gallery. So let's click style. And we've got a couple of options here. We've got image, overlay and content. Under image, we've got normal and hover options. Let's go through the normal settings first. So this is how the images are appearing right now. We're gonna add a border. I'm gonna add five width. And we've got border radius here, which is how smooth the corners are. Quite like them smooth, but this is you know, so we're gonna have sharp corners and I'm going to leave the CSS filters for a moment. I'm now going to look at the hover settings. So we're going to click hover. The border color I'm going to keep the same. It's just going to be white. The border radius I'm going to keep the same as well. You can make it so that the corner is smooth when you hover over. I'm also going to make the image blur slightly. As you can see, the image doesn't blur here. So in the CSS filters, I'm just going to up the blur so that when we hover, we can read the text a little bit better. We can also add a hover animation. So when we hover over it, we could make the image zoom in like so, slightly moves. And we've also got move left, move right, etc. I'm gonna go with zoom in. We've also got animation duration, so that's how long it takes. So let's just up it for example, and that takes a while. And the lower we go, it becomes instant. Let's just go back up to around here. So now we can change the style of the overlay. Again, we've got normal and hover settings. So currently we don't have an overlay as it is. Before we move on to the hover options, I'm just going to show you how the blend modes work by adding an overlay, a purple overlay, slightly transparent like so. And then we can play around with the blend modes and as you can see, just by clicking through, you can see how each one works. I don't actually want an overlay though on our images in a normal state. We just want to change the overlay that occurs when we hover over. So let's go to hover. And we can see it's just the default gray at the moment. And I want it to go purple, uh, but not as strong as that. Let's reduce that slightly. And as you can see, this applies to every image that we have. Lastly, in style, then we'll go to content. We've got alignment. So this is the text here. We've got center, left and right. I'm going to go with center. We've got vertical position. So we've got top, middle and bottom. So this moves the text around vertically. I'm going to leave it on bottom. We've got padding. I think that's quite even as it is, so I'm going to leave it on 20. But if I up that, you can see it becomes a bit more squashed. So let's go back to 20. Now we want to 
look at the typography of our overlay. So let's make sure the text is white. We now want to change the font family of our title. And I'm just going to go with Amatic. And I'm going to go for about 1.2, I think. Yeah. Spacing is the space between the title and the description. So if I just up this, we can see the space getting larger. Let's just go with that. Description. Again, we want white. Typography. We want the other font family that we use, which is Josephine Sands. And I think I'm going to leave the font size as it is. Lastly, then, we've got the hover animation of the text. We can have it fade in. We can have it grow. We've got all sorts of settings here. Just play around. Let's have a look what grow looks like. There you go. You can see that it slightly grows as the image also zooms in. So we'll leave it on that. But just have a play around with that. With a lot of the gallery settings, I would have a play around. There's lots of things that you can do. Um, but we look forward to seeing what you come up with. When you're happy with your gallery, click the green button at the bottom, update, and we will see you in the next video.